Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how I managed to get a sprite to follow a path in Hackspixel. And it's not difficult to do. There are just a few things to consider when implementing it. And as you can see in the screen, we have a black box, which is going along the snow. And then once it gets to the path, it will start skiing or, or moving around the ski slopes and I'll show you how I did that but apart from that the game the character moves as expected you can still throw snowballs you can still hide if you want that that all works but this black square is supposed to be um, an NPC or an enemy that if they spot you it will be game over so this is the code for the skier which is the name I've given to that black rectangle character here it extends a class I've made called sense character which is a character that will have some senses, but that's not the focus of this video, so I'm gonna skip over that for now. Let's focus on this bit. So here, this is the path that the skier follows once they've got to a certain point. And these coordinates were figured out by me manually. So I used a tool called Figma to plot the points. As you can see here, this is the level, this is the skier, or this is a representation of the skier. And these are the points I plotted along the ski path to kind of get a smooth curve for the sprite to follow. So I got these coordinates from here. There's an X and Y coordinate. I don't know how visible that is. And then I pasted it into the code here. At this point with these movement coordinates, I then added it to the sprite. So it's very easy to add a path to a sprite in Hackspixel. Each sprite or each FLX sprite has a field called path. And then all that needs to happen is you can add an FLX path to that field and that's pretty much it. What's going on here with these FLX point court is that the path only accepts FLX points. So I've converted all of these values into FLX points using an array map because these are arrays. And after the conversion, I've assigned it to this FLX path to then add it to this field. Now this character has a state machine and this is what triggers the events of the character. And the character only starts skiing at the start ski state, which makes sense. So if you remember correctly, the character will start to move here from right to left at a steady velocity. And then when they get to this point, they'll ski down. And that is controlled by this approaching. So the approaching here moves the character at a steady velocity, which is the approach speed. And then once they get to a certain point, so this is a, this is a FLX object. Once they overlap the object, the state will change to start ski and then the player will move down the path. So this is what triggers the movement. It's a start method with a few arguments, but I'm only using the speed option. So the character is moving down at a speed of 680. So after the character starts going down the path, then the state will change to skiing. Path has a lot of very useful methods, and I've used the start one here, but I've also used the on complete one, which triggers once the character has completed the path. And what this will do is then hide the character, so it gives them an alpha of zero, and change the state to resetting. What the resetting state does is it will grab the elapsed time from the update function. And the elapsed time is essentially how many frames per second the game will update at. So the game's FPS can be set in the main HX file. It's one of the arguments here. So update frame rate. And by default, it's set to 60. So that means the game will refresh 60 frames every second. And if we divide one by 60, we get 0 0.0. 0166 recurring. So this value here will be 0 0.016 recurring. And I've got a variable here called off screen count. So this is the amount of time the character is off screen. So it's going to add 0 0.016 recurring to this variable. So it keeps incrementing that until this off screen count is more than the wait time before reset variable. This is set to 0 0.2, which is essentially two seconds, which means the player will be off screen for two seconds before they're put back in the start position. The alpha is changed to one, so they've been made visible. The off-screen count will be reset and the state will go back to approaching. So this is essentially a loop. They go from approaching to start ski, to skiing, to resetting and back to approaching. And that's what you're seeing here. So they start approaching, then they hit start ski, then they start skiing, and then they hit resetting. So they're down for two seconds and then they start the ski again. And that's pretty much it. 
Now, in the Hacks Flexible Debug screen, you can actually see a visual representation of the path, which I'm going to attempt to show you now. But before I start doing that, I want to point out the fact that there's something up with my debug screen, and I'm sure this has been fixed, but for some reason, this text here in particular is showing vertically where it should be showing horizontally. So with this kind of weird bug aside, let me go ahead and show you the path. If I hit this, it will show you the bounding box around each sprite, and it should be showing you the path as well. The path is actually there. The issue is that my foreground, so to the white snow foreground, is the same color as the path. So what I'm going to do is hide that. So now the foreground's gone, and you can kind of faintly see the path here. So this is the path that I've drawn, and this is the path that the sprite is following. It's not a smooth curve because it's plotted with coordinates and vertices, and obviously the more coordinates I plot, the smoother the curve would be, but it is good enough to give the illusion that the sprite is skiing. Now, this is just a quick overview of getting a sprite to follow a path. If you want more information, there is a good tutorial, which I'm gonna link in the description of this video about how to do it, written by OSAT Games. And this is the one that I followed to originally add paths to my game. So go ahead and look at that if you want more information. Also, of course, there's some more information on the Hacks Flixel API documentation about how the path works. The path is actually not part of FLX Sprite, but part of FLX Object. So here, this is the documentation for FLX Object, and FLX Sprite extends FLX Object. So that's how that is working. Of course, if you have any comments on the code or want to know more information about a specific part, then please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you enjoy the format of these videos where I'm kind of going through an overview of the code that I've written, then let me know as well. I'm happy to change things up so that people can get the most out of what I'm teaching. Thanks for watching.